going on kids? Today we're going to take a look at cutting the brake rotors on this 98 Cherokee with a Pro-Cut on-car brake lift. So a quick tour of this machine. We've got all of our controls here on this button box for starting and centering the machine. We've got the handle on the back that's going to allow us to bring this arm, the cutter, up and down so we can center it up on our wheel. We've got the hub that bolts up to the adapter pieces and there's going to be adapters for just about every different make and model. So you kind of have to guess and check to figure out which one of these Swiss cheese hole sets lines up with your particular hub. But once you've got it, it attaches to that hub adapter with this screw handle back here. See that kind of threads out and that'll thread and that's what holds the machine onto the car. You've got the motor that actually spins everything up here and a on off switch on the back so you can start the machine and turn it off. Uh, the power cords in the back and all the tools you're going to need to do adjustments on the machine are right here up on the top. I'm here in the front left corner of the car and I've got my hub adapter. I need to kind of guess and check and see which one of these uh, sets of holes is going to go around through the wheel studs. So once I've got that on, I need to use a regular ratchet and extension uh, to thread these on. And we're not going to use an impact on these because that can damage our flanges. So we just need to get put them all on in a star pattern and just thread them on by hand and just kind of snug them up. That way we know it's on here flat and then when we go to cut the rotor, it's going to cut straight. So I've got this base plate on here and I've got all the lug nuts snugged down. I went in a star pattern. Now I have to remove this brake caliper. The on-car brake lathe is going to come in at the exact same spot that this caliper used to go onto. That way it's a clean shot into the base of the rotor so we don't have to worry about things like dust shields getting in the way. So I've got my mounting bolts out and I'm going to grab onto the caliper and pull towards me a little bit to get a little bit of play so I can slide the caliper off with the pad still in it. And I'm going to use this green hook to hang the caliper inside the fender well so it's out of the way. So I've got the pro cut over here on the front left. And I've got the adapter already in place, and I also have the machine at the right height. Again, you can adjust this, bring it up and down, adjust the pitch of the cutters. This whole machine is adjustable kind of on the fly, so it fits at whatever level your vehicle is at. There's also a chip tray down here that you need to make sure it clears whatever lift you're working on. Normally we'd use this on a two-post lift, but this truck happens to be on a four-post, so we're working with what we got. As I go to slide this machine in, I need to make sure that I've lined up the adapter plate has a dowel pin. I need to make sure that dowel pin is lined up with one of the holes that are on this mounting plate. Once you have that lined up and this slides in, you'll spin the knob on the back and that'll thread this bolt into that hole right there. It should thread in relatively easily. If you're feeling resistance when you're trying to tighten this down, you need to stop because it's going in crooked and reset the machine and then just try it again. So you're going to bring the cutters all the way out and then align the machine so that the cutters are going in where the caliper used to be. This knob over here on the machine will bring the cutters out. And I can loosen this orange knob and then grab the entire head of my cutters and spin it around. Then I can bring this back in. And now the machine's placed in the right spot. The next step is to level the machine to the vehicle. So down here in the control box, we've really only got two buttons, a start and a reset. 
Uh, if we have everything lined up properly, all we're gonna need is the start. But if it doesn't align properly, you may need to reset it and try again. Uh, we'll press start, turn on the on switch, and you'll see the motor is gonna spin up the whole drivetrain on the front axle of this vehicle, and then you're gonna hear it click while it's centering itself up to the rotor. Now that that's level, uh, it says ready to cut, and we can adjust our cutters to the right cut depth. So I'm going to turn the machine on, and I'm going to touch off both cutter heads uh, on the rotor. And I'm not going to make a super deep cut. I'm just going to bring them in until the actual cutter blade touches the surface of the rotor. And that beautiful sound means that we have a run out issue. It's not a nice constant sound. We hear kind of a, a pattern to it, which means these rotors uh, are not flat. They do have a run out issue. We're also hearing it kind of ring like a bell, and that's because we don't have a, a vibration damper on there. But we'll put that on before we actually make our final cut. So making the cut's actually going to get pretty noisy, so I'll just explain what I'm doing ahead of time. Uh, I've already touched off the cutters onto either side of the rotor, and with it spinning, I'm going to run the cutters down to where I want to start my cut, kind of just beyond where the pads are touching. And then with this machine, we can take up um, 20 thousandths of an inch, which is a ton, as opposed to our off-car brake lathe, where we're usually doing cuts of like four or five thousandths. Here we can do 20. So the idea with this machine is that we just want to do one pass and done. It does one finish cut, all the way down the entire surface of the rotor, and then you're finished. That way you're saving time, you're not worried about blowing brakes apart, uh, putting stuff back together. Uh, it's a much quicker option, as long as the setup and everything goes the way it should. I'm gonna put these vibration dampers on here, so hopefully it stops ringing on us. All right, so my cutters are loose, and I'm going to take a really, really deep cut out of this, again, up to uh, 20 thousandths of an inch. And lock your cutters. Put your vibration damper back on. And then push this knob and let it cut.
we can turn the machine off and our finished surface is still a directional surface because those cutters are moving out like a record. Uh, so then you want to take a piece of scotch bright or something and kind of clean this up with some brake clean and put a cross directional kind of pattern, an omnidirectional, just kind of scrub all the way around this thing to get rid of that record groove. Um, but then spray everything down with brake clean and put your caliper back on, torque to spec, put your wheel back on, torque to spec, pump the brakes before you drive it, and you should be good to go. And that's the basics of an on-car brake lift. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email. Uh, be good, and I'll see you next time.